right now, I'm gonna show you how to paint watercolor landscapes from your car. Outside is beautiful, but it can be cold, it can be windy, it can be dangerous, it can be uncomfortable, it could be raining, it could be too sunny. Let's get back inside. Before I show you any of my watercolor landscape paintings, and before we go to any of the cool locations that we're going to go to by the end of this video, let's get comfortable because getting comfortable is one of the reasons why we're doing watercolor from our car and not outside in the wind, in the sun, um, and the crumbling seaside cliff. So get your chair all set up. Um, what adjustments are best for you? One thing I care about a lot is lumbar support and the comfort of my backrest. So pro tip, bring a towel with you. Good to have at the beach anyways. And you can form this towel into different shapes if you need to put a support behind your lower back. You can also use the towel to create sort of a working area here on your lap because the next most important thing is getting your sketchbook or your painting pad in a position that allows for um, good painting comfortably. Tip number one, start small and stay small or get smaller. Painting small landscapes like this is gonna help us learn a lot faster and get less frustrated. Next tip, think about composition. Where do lines move through your painting? Where do shapes fit in? Where are your lines of the thirds? Can you use the rule of thirds? All of these things are gonna help your composition when you're choosing a landscape to paint. All right, so I obviously cannot bite off this whole thing. Having a viewfinder really helps with this part, but you could also use your phone. So we're just gonna zoom right in, for example, at what some possible chunks are that we could bite off. If I'm really interested in that arch, maybe I could cut off something that way. This is still, um, I would say, too big of a frame that the um, camera's letting me zoom in on. I will wanna zoom in on something even smaller in the middle of this, maybe getting more of the sky and thinking about where the horizon is. I usually don't want the horizon to be right in the middle. That's the most boring. If I'm interested in that arch rock, putting it right in the middle is also the most boring. So thinking about these thirds. So right now I have one third sky, two thirds ocean. Another good option using the rule of thirds would be one third ocean, two thirds sky. And look at how I also have the arched rock now a third of the way from the left or a third of the way from the right. So those are some things about a rule of thirds that you can use. And if you have a viewfinder, you can do it. You can try using it on your phone if you don't get distracted by looking at Instagram. Just to be sure that I don't get paralyzed by perfectionism, I'm just going to use this really big brush tip um, zebra pin, and it's their largest size that they make. You know that these kind of um, brush pins are my favorite pins to draw with. I often start with a gray like I did up there, but I'm sensing that I could get some issues with perfectionism and I want to focus on quantity over quality because I want to learn how to make better watercolor paintings um, faster. So I'm going to start with um, just getting some sort of thumbnails in here actually because even before you use your watercolors, you want to be thinking about the values and the shapes and the composition, especially the cropping is what I'm gonna be thinking about a lot right now. So I'm just gonna go straight to this and I'm gonna also remind myself I wanna get values, so relative values here. All right, and that is just one little sort of cartoonish sketch that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look in a completely different direction and try to do another one. I'm really wishing I had my viewfinder right now. Notice the zebra pin doing this lately. I don't like how it's bubbling ink out of the top there. It's slightly disturbing. Doesn't give me confidence in bringing this on a international trip, that's for sure.
it's true. I haven't even started talking about watercolor yet, even though this video is called watercolor landscape painting. That's because getting these basic things about composition and cropping and value right is going to make more difference than anything that you do with your watercolor no matter how much wet on wet technique you use no matter how many happy accidents you have or how fancy a watercolor paper none of those things are going to help your watercolor painting if you don't have these fundamentals one way to learn watercolor faster is to do color swatches. Instead of having to learn all of the aspects of painting and color matching at the same time, you're just focused on getting the colors right. I still combine color swatches as a way to learn about colors faster, so I will often be doing them at the same time I am doing my actual painting. I make notes about which pigments I used, which mixes I used, and this really helps me separate those learning tasks and learn them faster. Whew. I'm starting to feel kind of stiff from watercolor painting from my car. So I'm going to shake it out a little bit before we go to the next location. Sometimes all you need to do is turn your car around and point it the other way. I'm facing the other way now and the sun is hitting me and my paper a little bit more. The sun is also reflecting a lot more off of the landscape that I'm looking at. So there's going to be a lot of very bright values in this composition. There's also these annoying beach flies that got into my car, but let's see what we can do looking out this way. I think there might be some more interesting value compositions with better contrasts looking in this direction. Now I'm doing the underdrawing with my favorite gray pen. This one is no longer being made, but here's a link to a similar one. This gray ink is a great way to do an underdrawing below your watercolor painting. I bit off kind of a lot with this frame right here and my eyes are already starting to feel strained from the light bouncing off the paper. But let's see what I can do. I'm gonna to try to do it a la prima so I don't take forever on this one. And I'm also probably gonna start with a black ink underdrawing. The black ink underdrawing is gonna force me to be bold and to do this faster. Sometimes these gray ones with the gray backgrounds are really fun and subtle, but they also take a lot longer. All right, my bigger watercolor landscape painting is not my favorite, but it's big and people like big for some reason when it comes to watercolor paintings. However, you can learn so much more with these small ones. And um, luckily my big one didn't take that much longer because I went really fast. I basically did a la prima, so I'm not building up layers like I am in a painting like this. All right, now it's time to check out another location. Let's see if we can go up into the hills, do a couple more landscape watercolor paintings from the car. Part of watercolor painting landscapes from your car is just driving around on weird country roads looking for good spots that are safe for painting but also have good views. I'm usually a really good undistracted driver but sometimes when I'm looking for a nice painting scene or looking at birds I get distracted. I keep seeing good views but there's nowhere safe to pull off the road. I hope I don't get stuck here in this mud on the side of the road. 
This spot is not perfect, but I've been driving along this narrow road. There's almost no place to pull off, and this felt like the only place where I could pull off without getting stuck in the mud. There is a little bit of a view up ahead, so I'm going to try to do a couple more watercolor paintings um, before calling it a day. There were some scary looking barns and lots of no trespassing signs, and so I always feel a little bit weird out in places like this but it should be fine. And there's a nice view up there with a little building and an old eucalyptus tree. All right, I sort of rushed those last two. The scene is okay. It's a cool enough landscape to, to paint, but I was just getting a little bit sketched out back here on this road and all the huge trucks. Keep that in mind when you're out doing watercolor painting from your car, but I feel pretty good about all of the paintings and all of the learning on this page. That's a lot of watercolor practice and a lot of practice doing landscapes. And I guarantee if you do a lot of landscapes, you're gonna get better faster than if you do fewer, bigger paintings. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Nature Journal Show, free as always. And if you wanna get even more in-depth stuff, I'm starting to make classes on Skillshare. I already have one class on there. People have been liking it, it's very in-depth. And I'm going to be making one all about watercolor landscape painting pretty soon. So check out my Skillshare link down below and you can sign up and get one month free when you sign up for a full year and um, check out the class that I have up there now. It's a nature journaling virtual adventure in the desert. If you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the Nature Journal Show, check out this playlist here. Bye.